So for this first DAX lesson, we're going to try to keep everything super simple. And one thing that I always like to emphasize when I'm, you know, first working with DAX measures for people that are maybe newer to DAX is never panic too much about DAX. There's always multiple ways to accomplish almost everything in DAX. And there are also a whole lot of situations where you can use DAX or not use DAX in Power BI. I mean, like oftentimes it is sort of considered a best practice to use DAX. I find DAX really useful for keeping all of my measures and calculations organized, even when those measures and calculations are super simple. For example, if I'm just summing a column, but always know that there are multiple ways to do things in DAX and your flavor of DAX as you get more confident with DAX is probably going to be a little bit different from someone else's flavor of DAX. I've been writing DAX for almost a decade now, and I see people, other people who are experts in DAX doing uh, even fairly simple calculations in ways that absolutely blow my mind. Like I would never think to approach a, a DAX uh, calculation in that respect. I mean, like everybody, you know, it's just like, um, you know, writing poetry. Everybody has their own approach. Everybody has their own style. And ultimately, you know, for me, as long as the DAX calculation performs well, loads quickly, and above all else is accurate, who cares about, you know, the uh, underlying art? Ultimately, the only thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is that we're keeping all of our calculations organized. And if you work on a team where other people could hypothetically take over your report and have to manage your DAX, uh, because different people have their own approaches to DAX, it's also you know a, a good best practice to try to figure out how you're going to write or stylize your DAX in a way that's easy to read. But for now, as we're just getting started, let's go ahead and create a new page here, separate from where we're going to build out our infographic. And I'm going to hide this page because this is just going to be a page where we where, where we kind of throw stuff onto the report and try to, you know, um, make our very rough visuals. We're not going to focus a lot on formatting yet. We're not going to focus almost at all on making this stuff look pretty. All of the pretty crap is going to happen over here in our infographic. For now, we just want to get stuff on the page and have it be accurate and start writing our decks. So we're going to keep things super basic. This first page, I'm just going to call this um, summary data because that's basically all we're, all we're doing. These first DAX calculations, we're just kind of summarizing very high level numbers from our data. And we're going to actually write our very first measure here. And I'm going to call this first measure total transactions. And I'm just going to leave it as is for now. I'm not actually gonna write everything, but here's the measure over here that I created called total transactions. And of course, I haven't written anything yet. So if I click on this and throw it onto the page, you can see, I'll go ahead and make this a card. There's nothing at all happening in my total transactions calculation. It's just over here. So, you know, let's go ahead and head back over to our Kraken Coffee fact table and let's look at our transaction ID column. And of course, every single value in our transaction ID column represents one unique transaction for Kraken Coffee. And you can see down here, I have 149,116 rows and they are all unique or distinct values. So this is the number that I would expect to see. This 149,116 is the number of transactions in my data set. Because of that, we could do something like distinct count, which is its own function. And we can do distinct count on transaction ID. In other words, tell me how many unique values there are in that column. And I'm gonna go over here to my card and just so you can see everything, I'm going to uh, update my callout value and instead of uh, allowing Power BI to automatically configure how this is displayed, I'm gonna say, show me everything. So I'm selecting none. And always make sure that your numbers are formatted correctly. I hate when I just see 149116 and I have to mentally, you know, work, work out three characters and drop a comma there. Always throw the comma in there for the reader. 
for maximum readability. But there's my 149,116, which of course matches exactly the number of unique transactions. But, you know, one other thing that I'll go ahead and mention here is we already know that this data set has the 149,116 rows and values. In other words, we already know that every single value in the transaction ID column is already unique. So we honestly don't even need the distinct part of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and instead of using distinct count, where Power BI has to hypothetically go and make sure that every single value is distinct, I'm just gonna tell it to count everything that's in that column. I get exactly the same number over here, but power, but it's faster for Power BI and more efficient because all it has to do is find the number of rows instead of taking the additional step to confirm that each row is unique. We already know that it's redundant and unnecessary to use distinct count. So here's our number of transactions. And since we all now have a measure over here, one other thing that I'm going to do with my measure table over here, this underscore 01 underscore core measures, is I'm just going to right click on column one and I'm going to hide that column and notice that where before I had this little like hash mark, uh, hashtag looking thing, that it's now replaced with a calculator. What Power BI is doing is it's now recognizing that this table doesn't actually contain any data and it's just being used to store my measures. So we now have a measure table. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a new measure here. In this second measure, I'm just gonna call total sales. And what I'm going to do with this measure is I'm going to sum and I'm going, and you can see it as soon as I hit sum and add a parenthesis, it is asking me which column from my data do I want to sum? And of course, a lot of these columns you'll notice in my date table, they don't even make sense to sum. The only column here that really makes sense for me to sum almost in my entire data set with a few exceptions is my total sales column. Makes sense. We're making a total sales measure and we're going to sum our total sales column. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this card. And I'm going to, instead of using total transactions, I'm just gonna grab my total sales measure, which I'm holding right now. And I'm just gonna drop it over top of total transactions. There's my total sales. Now you'll notice that this is, once again, not formatted the way that I prefer to format things since we're dealing in currency here. Let's go ahead and click on total sales, head up here to our measure tools, and let's tell Power BI this is a currency. There's my dollar sign. And you'll notice that I've got you know several trailing decimal numbers here. None of those are important to me. Let's just go ahead and round everything up to the decimal place so that I can see I've got $698,812 in sales. Now, you might be wondering, well, Sean, can't I just open up my fact table and grab my total sales column and just drop that onto the page? and turn it into a card? And the answer is absolutely. You're getting exactly the same number here, but I prefer to keep everything as a measure because once I have this measure, I can reuse it in other measures and keep building on these calculations while also you know, having a calculation up here that I can just you know, insert and drop into any visual that I think of. There's my $698,812, and I can easily visualize this by store. Looks like almost every store has exactly the same number of sales. I can visualize this by uh, product category if I want to. There we go. Whoops, looks like I accidentally deleted the wrong thing. Let's go ahead and drop total transaction back in here. That's looking much better. I can go ahead and visualize this by product detail if I want or product type. Measures just make it a little bit easier for this very, very quick, um, you know, sort of uh, analysis and comparison, visualization, whatever you want to call it. And you can easily reuse these. So since I have these two cards here and these two measures, the next one that I'm going to calculate is going to demonstrate how we can reuse these measures as we create them. And for this, I'm going to use average order size. Now I could absolutely, for something like this, where I know that every single row in my fact table represents one transaction or one order, I could just go in here and say average total sales. Let's go ahead and create a new card and let's go ahead and replace total sales with our average order size. And I see $4.69. 
I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this down to two decimal places. And I don't know, $4.69, that kind of makes sense to, to be the average order size of a coffee shop. I feel like that's roughly the, the price of a cup of coffee or maybe a scone or a baked good. Like I, to me, based on my own uh, coffee shop experiences, that $4.69 doesn't make me blink much. That seems to make sense. And, and it makes sense too that we're just averaging total sales because we know that that represents the granularity or grain of our data. However, since we're learning DAX here, I just want to show you too how you can sort of chain these calculations together. So I'm going to make this just a little bit harder than it needs to be by using the divide function. And I'm going to divide my total sales measure. And you can see it's popping up here. It's got a calculator next to it. And that's representing my total sales measure over here. And I'm going to divide that by total transactions. And notice not a thing changed. I'm getting exactly the same answer over here. And, you know, you could also write this by just not using the divide function and instead using like a backslash like you would, uh, you know, maybe in something like Excel. However, I always tell people it's always best practice to use the divide function because the divide function is made to handle sort of weird mathematical situations where like maybe you're dividing by zero or something or uh, other things that could potentially throw like an error. So always use the divide function instead of using uh, the backslash division. Now that we have those three measures, let's go ahead and add a couple more uh, just super, super simple uh, measures here. Let's go ahead and head up here and I'm going to add uh, total stores. And for this, honestly, just for laughs, I'm gonna use distinct count on my store ID column. Again, this is a situation where I could absolutely just use count because I'm, I'm using my store dim table, which if you'll remember, only contains three values. If I just used the count function here and counted each row in this table, it would return three. But again, just to demonstrate the distinct count function, I'm gonna use the distinct count function here, knowing that between you and me, not exactly best practice. And for my last one, I'm gonna create one more measure. And this one is going to be called total products. And for this one, I'm gonna use count again. I don't want you to think that you can always just get away with using distinct count. I'm gonna use product ID and count and this should return 80 if I'm not mistaken. And there we go, there's our total number of products. So again, super, super uh, simple DAX calculations that I'm building here. And these are you know, not going to be used, uh, or all of these aren't necessarily going to be used throughout the infographic, but they are gonna be presented at the top of the infographic just to present some sort of summary data around our three Florida stores that anyone who's jumping into this measure can use just to sort of get acquainted with the data at a very high level. And then we're gonna use the rest of uh, the, the, the space in our infographic to build out more robust and interesting data visualizations that are really going to help tell the story of uh, performance of these three coffee shops in the first year of, or in the first half of 2023. So, so far we've created five very easy, very simple DAX measures. We're already going to, you know, sort of kick this into high gear. There's no time to waste. I'm going to go ahead and show you a more complex DAX measure. And I wouldn't be showing you this if I didn't think that you couldn't handle it. I, I like, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a big step up from what we've done so far, where it's just very basic arithmetic, just summing, averaging, dividing. We're going to uh, now whip out a DAX function called rank X that's going to help us rank different uh, the values in different fields from our data set based on the measures that we've created over here. So first, we're going to go ahead and grab our product detail. And I'm also going to just grab our product ID real fast. And I'm just going to show you super, super fast. You know, here are all of our uh, product details with a bunch of very silly names like Davy Jones's Sustainably Grown Organic Coffee. 
Don't blame me for how silly these product names are. Literally, I knew that I wanted to do like a pirate themed or nautical coffee shop uh, themed data set, but God knows I'm too busy to come up with like uh, 80 something different names for all of these products. So I had ChatGPT just come up with all of them and some of them are dumb, some of them are like maybe not bad, I don't know. Um, but let's go ahead and just use product ID and product detail. And we're going to create two different ranking functions here. And you can see it looks like I've maybe got one error here. Who knows? We're not going to worry too much about it. Let's go ahead and drop total sales and total transactions uh, into the data set. And you can see that when I sort by total sales, looks like Davy Jones's Sustainably Grown Organic Hot Chocolate Large is my uh, top seller by total sales or revenue. However, it looks like by total transactions, this crow's nest croissant is my top seller by just the, by the number of times that people have ordered it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of product ranking formulas. Uh, one that's going to rank all of the products by total sales and another that's going to rank everything by total transactions. The first measure that we're going to create is going to be product sales rank. And again, we're using our rank X function. And the good thing about DAX is that it walks you through every step that in, in this function. So what we're going to do is we're going to rank something from a table or all of the values in a table by some kind of measure or expression, in this case, total sales dollars. Value, you're not gonna have to worry about. We're not going to use value. It's an optional input to this that we're just gonna skip right over. You're gonna have to pick which order you want that ranking to uh, move in. And we're going to have to reconcile how we want ties to be broken in instances where maybe two products have the exact same number of dollars in sales or the same number of transactions. So what, what I want to rank are the values in my product detail column and the expression that I wanna use is my total sales measure, which is over here. And you can see there it is in the table. Again, I'm gonna skip over the value step. So if you keep your eyes here, I'm gonna enter a comma. Now the value section is lit up. I'm gonna skip right over it by entering another comma. I'm gonna go straight to order. And of course, descending order is what I wanna use because for uh, I, I want the top value here and total sales to be my number one. And as total sales decreases, I want my ranking to increase. So I'm gonna use descending order of my measure to determine my uh, rank order. And for ties, I want to use dense. There's dense. And I'm gonna go ahead and commit this knowing that if I did this right, it should be wrong. Well, Sean, that doesn't make any sense. So let me show you. First, I'm just gonna drop this in, into the table. There we go. Okay, uh, my computer glitched a little bit. It took a second to get that measure in there. And you can see that currently this is, this is showing every single product ranked number one. Okay, what is happening? Why is DAX so confusing? Well, what's happening here is that currently this DAX uh, function and this new measure that we've created is evaluating every single row in this visual separately. So right now it's just looking at the first row here and saying, okay, this is the, the top uh, product for sales in, at this row. This is the top product for sales at this row. This is the top product for sales for this row and so on and so forth. And it's basically useless, right? I don't need every single product to have the same ranking. What am I gonna do with that information? No problem, it's easily fixed. We're just gonna go up here and we're going to make one small change up here. Instead of using values, I'm gonna use another function called all selected. And all and all selected are two extremely critical DAX functions for you to be aware of. And I want us to focus on the all part. What we're doing now is instead of telling, uh, just telling Power BI that we want to rank the values in product detail, we're specifying to Power BI that we want to rank all of the selected values in this table, which in this case is just all the values in the table. We want to rank all of these items against each other. It seems obvious, but there, as with any coding language, there's a specific way that you have to tell Power BI that this is what we're trying to do. 
So we're now telling Power BI we want to rank all of the product detail values against each other. Based on the values in our total sales measure, we want to rank them in descending order using dense tie-breaking logic. I'm going to hit enter and now you can see my ranking is correct. I've got one, two, three, four, all the way down to the bottom of my data set. There are all of my products. We're good to go there. Now I am going to break this just to show you another aspect of this function that can get confusing. Now I'm going to go ahead and add product ID into this table and notice that by adding product ID, my product sales rank measure is now broken. And that is because in the context of this visual, we, we're ranking product detail, but we now have a new category or field of data in this visual that Power BI doesn't have a clue what to do with. So we're going to remove this complication by telling Power BI, hey, just rank whatever I'm using from the product dim table in this visual. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just say rank anything from the table, no columns specified, and now notice everything's right back to normal. Got one, two, three, four, five. Davy Jones' Sustainably Grown Organic Hot Chocolate Large, kind of a tongue twister, is now number one again. This seems to be working great. Now I'm going to get rid of both of those columns and I'm just going to drop my product category in here again. And you can see that it's not working great when I use a smaller subset of my data, right? You know, it's ultimately still ranking kind of at the level of uh, all of my products. So we're going to be revisiting rank X later on, but I just wanted to show you how when you have a dimension table, you can create a function that just kind of ranks everything here based on a measure from your data set. Let's do one more example of that. But this time we're going to just copy our measure here and we're going to, instead of doing a product sales rank, we're going to do product transactions rank. And all we're gonna do is instead of using sales as our measure, we're gonna use our total, total transactions measure. And I'm gonna drop this in. And you can see the, the rankings over here are completely different. If I sort instead of by total sales, by total transactions, now everything is organized one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got two different rankings happening. One's being driven by my total sales measure. The other's being driven by total transactions. Now that we have these rankings, let's go ahead and see if we can find a way to isolate our best selling product by sales and by transactions. So let's go ahead and call this um, I'm going to call this top earner, and this is going to be calculate, and I'm just going to say return the first product detail, but I'm going to filter based on product dim and my product sales ranking being one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another card here and let's go ahead and drop top earner into this. And you can see I've got Davy Jones's sustainably grown organic hot chocolate large. Boy, am I already getting sick of saying that. I should have definitely gone through these and uh, told um, ChatGPT to only give me like names with a certain number of characters, but ChatGPT is gonna ChatGPT. So there is, uh, we can confirm that this is my top earner among all of my products. And now I'm going to create a new measure and I'm, you can use exactly the same measure that you already wrote here. And I'm going to be calling this one most popular seller. And this time I want to use my transactions rank instead. And my most popular seller should be my crow's nest croissant, which it is. So there we go. Again, these are definitely much, much more complicated uh, than the very basic uh, DAX equations that we wrote up here, where all we were doing is summing, averaging, and dividing, of course. But I wanted you to have at least a couple examples of some more difficult DAX that you also could potentially be using quite a bit down the road. So I would highly encourage you to 
you know, take something else from the data set and try try to rank it just to, you know, get hopefully get your uh, head kind of wrapped around what's hap happening uh, within this measure. But if you're not, no big deal. Um, this is about as hard as our DAX is going to get. There might be a couple of examples, but just kind of wanted to show you the easy stuff and give you a taste of some of the slightly more difficult stuff. Uh, to sort of set the stage for the rest of the DAX that we're going to be building on for the remainder of this lesson. And if you're already getting scared of DAX, I also want to re-emphasize that, first of all, there are all kinds of different ways to accomplish what I just showed you uh, with this ranking in other ways. Again, there, there are always multiple roads to the same solution. Uh, with DAX. And I also want to re-emphasize, since this is a somewhat beginners to intermediate level course, that there are also oftentimes non-DAX solutions that you can utilize uh, to get these same answers. So I don't want you to feel like, oh man, if I, do, if I don't learn DAX or if I don't master DAX right away, I'm never going to be a good Power BI developer. What I'm going to do here is just so I can add more stuff onto the screen, I'm just going to shrink these down. And honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this table since I feel like we, we, we've we got a, a good feel for what was happening there. Go back and watch the previous video again if I just deleted something that you need to see. But let's go ahead and just copy these two over here. And I'm going to delete the measures from both, both of them. And I'm going to show you how to get exactly the same values for these two cards without any DAX whatsoever. So first, let's go ahead and grab our product detail. And I'm just going to grab that and put uh, product detail into these two cards. Again, this NA, I don't know what's happening. There's something in the data set. Hopefully I'll be fix this before you're actually uh, taking this course. But if the NA is still in there, then gasp, Sean never got around to it. Um, but again, let's just imagine that NA stands for non-alcoholic beverage or something like that. We're a coffee shop. I'm going to just talk my way out of whatever this uh, obvious error in my data set is representing. Okay. So we've got our product details in here. Right now it's just showing us the first product. We could easily show the last product if we wanted to. And none of this really matters. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm gonna click on this card. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna add another filter. You'll notice I just dragged and dropped product detail up here into my filters on this visual section. And instead of using basic filtering, I'm gonna use top in filtering. And here, Instead of you know ranking all of the products, I'm just going to use the built-in top-end filter, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop my total sales into this by value, and I'm going to tell Power BI return me the top value, and I've got my Davy Jones's sustainably grown organic hot chocolate large, which is what I was getting through my DAX-based equation. And I'm just going to double click on this last product detail and I'm just going to change the name of this to Top Earner. All I did was I just manually replaced the name within the context of this card. And you'll notice these two cards are identical now, except this one didn't require any DAX. For the next one, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to go grab my product detail column, drop it into the visuals or filters on this visual. Let's go to Top N. I'm going to return the top one value. A card can only contain one value, so I have to use top one. I'm going to grab my total transactions, drop it into buy value, hit apply filter. There's my crow's nest croissant, which is what it should be. Let's just head over here. And what I'm doing is I'm replacing this value here, this last product detail, which is representing my field here. And I'm just going to call this most popular seller. So there we go. If something if something is going on and you're stressed by the DAX and you're thinking, okay, I can't even complete the rest of this infographic because I missed something or Sean's DAX isn't working the way that he said it should work, just know there's always another way. I'm not going to call it a better way, but there are always, or I should say oftentimes, uh, alternative ways to just using DAX, especially when you're building fairly simple data visuals like we're going to be building in the remainder of this lesson.